We are gonna have a lot of fun with makeup today. You know how you'll look at someone and you'll think, oh my gosh, that makeup look just really works. And then sometimes you'll see a look that just doesn't work. Although when you look at all the individual components, everything looks wonderful. It just doesn't work well together. What we're gonna be talking about today is choosing colors that work for you and how to put together a full look based on a color palette. I think this is a topic that gets overlooked quite often and it can make such a difference. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing two full looks. This one right here and this one right here. You can see they're very different. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna talk you through the choices in colors that I'm making the whole way. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Welcome in, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50 where we talk everything beauty, fitness, and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. If you're new here, I'm so glad you stopped by for this one. It's going to be a lot of fun and I hope you consider subscribing before you leave today. Don't forget to click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you want all the good stuff, you might want to sign up for my Sunday morning email newsletter. The link is in the description box down below. Spoiler, it comes out Sunday mornings. <laughs> it is filled with all the good stuff I found throughout the week, whether it's a great buy or a super sale or something that I purchased and I really, really love, a great piece of information, a good recipe, whatever I would share with you if we were out together having coffee somewhere. That's what goes in the Sunday morning email newsletter. And I can promise you this, it is one of the most popular things. It's probably the most popular thing about my channel. I could disappear tomorrow and people would be saying, where's the Sunday morning email newsletter? It really is a lot of fun. It's totally free, super easy to sign up. You just click the link in the description box down below and you'll be all set. I think you're going to love it. As I mentioned, I'm going to be doing two full makeup looks today, so get comfy, grab something to drink. We're going to be here a while. The first look is going to be dark eyes and light lip. The next look is going to be dark lips, light eyes. One thing that I learned early on in my makeup journey is choosing a focus for your makeup. And my experience has been that it's best to choose either your eyes or your lips. When we see a makeup look that individually all the different parts look terrific, but unfortunately just the whole thing doesn't work together, it's often that there wasn't a choice being made between emphasizing the eyes or emphasizing the lips or even maybe the cheeks. Pick Picking a focus is really important when you have a look because you want everything to play supporting roles to whatever that focus is. Today we're going to do a dark eye creating a focus for the eye. So then I want to take the tone I've created and really create a support cast of characters on my face that are going to highlight the choice of my eyes. Most of this makeup you've seen before and I believe that most of these looks you can get with what you already have in your collection. They're very very classic looks. They're very very usable, wearable. They're just very different and I think it's going to be a lot of fun to see how different they are and yet how they work together for their color choices and focus choices. I've done my skincare. It's been on my skin I think for about oh an hour now and on my lips I have my City Beauty I don't have it right here plumping lip gloss which is what I put on my lips before I do my makeup that way by the time it comes time to do my lipstick my lips are a little bit fuller they're hydrated they're a little bit plumper they're just looking a little bit more substantial than they were before I started I'm gonna start in primer wise with the Dermatology that's just their number one primer I like it very much it's kind of a gripping primer you can see it right here it's clear and Dermatology just puts together such a great product line. I haven't talked to anybody that doesn't like a product from Dermatology. It's just really good. So this is just going to go in a very, very light application around my face. Then I'm going to use the MAC Paint Pot in Painterly. That's going to go on my eyelids. This is what I use for an eyelid primer. Most of you know this already. It's really a nice option as well if you're not going to be wearing makeup for the day and you just want your face to be a little bit more evened out. This is a great way to cover up the little discolorations on your eyelids. See the difference right here? With 
without really feeling like you're putting a lot of makeup on. Now I'm going to take my Jones Road Face Pencil. This is in shade two. It's a little bit of a lighter shade, and that's going to go right underneath my eye. See that little purple line right there? That's exactly where I'm going to put that because I want to start working with that purple shadow underneath my eyes before I put my foundation on. So this will color correct and help to start disguising that discoloration. I'm just gonna tap that in really quick with my finger and now I'm gonna go in with the Catrice. This is their under eye brightener. I love this stuff. It is really very, very effective. It's very moisturizing so I'm just gonna get a little bit on my finger here and I'm gonna start patting that in underneath my eyes. And the combination of that Jones Road pencil and the under eye brightener is really going to help disguise those dark circles. I can't tell you how many times I have forgotten to put on under eye concealer when I do this because my under eyes look pretty doggone good after I get done with this process. And I want you to watch, I'm going right up into the little inside corner of my eye because that can get dark on me because of the change in the skin texture and tone in that area of my eye. So I go right up into that little circle up there and do a little bit of color correcting. Because I did my skincare this morning, which I do every morning, <laughs> my eyebrows have a lot of skincare in them and it's really hard to get product to set down into your eyebrows if you have skincare in there. What I do is I take just a little cheap compact. You can see this. This is a Rimmel compact. I've had it forever and a brush and I'm just going to swirl a little bit of that powder on my brush and that's going to get brushed into my eyebrows to soak up some of that skincare and make it easier for my eyebrow products to really adhere to that area and to the little hairs. Now I'm going to brush that through my brows and you can see, I don't know if you can see, but I can tell that my brows are a little less glossy. <laughs> than they were before. Now I'm going to use this e.l.f. brow pencil. This is in, I think it's cool brown, and I'm just going to start roughing in my eyebrows. And where I like to focus is on that bottom line, because that really does frame the eye and create a nice shape to finish off the eye. So I'm going to just rough it in, and then what I do is when I'm done with my makeup, or towards the end of my makeup, generally before I put my lipstick on, I'll go back in and do an any detail work on my brows because if I pull out the tip now it's going to get disturbed when I put my foundation on. So I'm just doing the beginning pieces now to give me a good shape and I'll come back in and really do the little finishing touches towards the end of my makeup. As I mentioned with this look, I have chosen my eyes as the focus and how that's going to play out is that my eyes are going to be very dark and that really leads the eye to looking at my eyes because they're darker. I'm going to be using the Stone Cold Fox palette. This is an awesome palette. I'm pretty sure they still have it in their collection from ColourPop. It is so stinking handy. If you like cool colored tones, this is an awesome palette. I'm going to be selecting just one color from the palette today and that's going to be my all over eye look. I might put a little bit of a highlight right under my brow, but the main look for my eye today is going to be a cool tone brown. So I'm going to be selecting this one called Bold Type right here. You can see it's a very cool tone brown. I'm going to get that on my brush, tap off the excess, and where I'm going to place my brush is where I want the most product or the most depth of color. So I'm going to place that right on the outside of my eye and just start working that over. And I will probably put on two or three applications of this shadow because I want it to be really rich and really deep. And you can see that's a very statement color for an eye look. Now I'm going to go across the lid with that and blending is, oh my gosh, so important, particularly as you get a little bit older because we have wrinkles and wrinkles, at least I do, <laughs> on my face. So I want my makeup products, my color products to be very well blended because I already have texture on my face. Same thing on the other eye, right where I want the most product, right in that outside corner. And I'm going to start moving that across my lid. And you can see I'm going up into the transition area and 
it down on my lid with that color. So I've got that shadow on both eyes and what I want to do now is take that same brush and I'm just going to blend that up into the brow bone area and sort of fade it into that underneath my eyebrows space. So you can see right now looking at my face that there's really a lot of focus on my eyes. That's where I want it to stay. So everything that I apply after this is just going to be a subtle supporting cast of characters in the same tone to really enhance the look of the eyes. For foundation today, I'm using the Revlon Illuminance. I love this. And you know, the last time I used this in a video, someone said that they have come out with a tint or something in this version. I purchased it because I was so interested in it and we'll be doing a video with that soon. So I'm just gonna tap this around my face. I got too much on the back of my hand. That's for doggone sure. Now I'm gonna take the BK Beauty 101 brush and I'm just gonna start pouncing that foundation over my skin and blending it in. This is such a beautiful foundation. Foundation. Drugstore price, pretty much my favorite full coverage foundation. I have a couple others. The next look I'll be doing is with another favorite. So you'll see both my hot favorites today. Now I'm going to take my dampened makeup sponge. What I do is I run this under the faucet and then I take a paper towel like this and I put it around the sponge and I squeeze really hard. So it is really just barely, barely damp. So I'm just going to press that foundation in. I just like the look of the finish when you use a sponge to finish off your foundation. It just this looks so pretty to me. Now I'm going to take another Jones Road pencil. This is in the color 6 and kind of touch up the little doodads on my face. Any areas that I just want to cover up a little bit. I have a couple of veins that run down the side of my forehead. They don't show up for me, but boy on camera they sure do. Think about the color. And then any age spots I want to cover up or little areas. Then I'm just going to pat those in. These pencils blend in so beautifully. They're really lovely. They're not that expensive. They're like $25 dollars each I think. Totally worth it in my opinion. Back in with that sponge. I'm going to put just a little bit more in a couple areas. If my foundation is going to break up, it's going to break up on my chin. So that seems to be my problem area. Isn't that a pretty look? It's really such a nice foundation. For under eye concealer, and I remembered, sometimes I just don't remember, I'm going to be using the Revlon Color Stay. This is in the color 015. It really does work nicely for me. It has a little bit of a yellow undertone. It looks like I have a lot on, but that's a really, really thin application. I'm just going to start patting that in with my finger. And this is a good opportunity to clean up any eyeshadow that may have come beyond this line. If you take the edge of your eye, that little corner of your eye, and where you want your eyebrow to end, that's kind of the area that you want your eyeshadow in. If it goes below that, it can really tend to drag your eye down, which for me, I don't want that at this point. So now I'm going to take that sponge and really press in that concealer. Now I'm going to take my Kosas Cloud Set Powder, get a little bit on that brush, tap it off, and then just lightly press that underneath my eyes. And then I'm going to tap down a few areas of my face where I want to not have a glow. I like a lot of glow on my skin, but there's places I don't want it. My chin is one of them. Back in with that sponge to press everything in. For contour today, I'm going to be using the Jones Road. This is in the color medium. I love this. I think they call it a gel bronzer. It looks like a tiny tube. There's so much product in here. And one of the toughest things I have, the toughest challenges, is getting a little enough on my hand in order to not waste it. So I'm going to put a little on the back of my hand, and then I'm going to start dotting that around my face, and then down along my chin line. Then I'm going to take a stipple brush and just start blending that in. This is such a beautiful product. You know, there are other products like this, and I believe e.l.f. has one that is a creamy formula for a bronzer. To be honest with you, I think the Jones Road would pencil out to be about the same price per amount of product. Clearly, the e.l.f. one is less expensive, but I think that there's more product in the Jones Road bottle, so I think it probably pretty much even out to be the same value. I really do like both of them. This one probably is my favorite. 
So I'm just blending that in and I'm making sure to get it back into my hairline so that I don't have a distinct line around my face. This product, the medium in the Jones Road, is also a cool tone or coolish tone bronzer, which works really well for my skin. I find that cool tones generally are going to work well for me. Now that I've got that bronzer worked in, I'm going to start applying more of the color cosmetics. When choosing colors, it seems like it should be a scientific thing. It's often not. It's often a little bit surprising. Most of you know, or some of you know, that I worked as a professional professional illustrator for decades. <laughs> So color is kind of my deal. I kind of understand color. Yet I even get surprised when I'll try a color cosmetic on my face and find out that it really works or it really doesn't work. It's so subjective and it can be a little bit tricky because the background that we're working with is not a white canvas or a white piece of paper. It's skin tone, it's hair tone, it's eye color, all of it. So I find that from time to time, I'll put a color on my face that I think one way or another about it and be totally surprised that it looks different. Generally with my skin tone I find that cool tones work better for me. Cool reds, cool neutrals, cool blushes. However that doesn't mean that I can't bring in a warm tone from time to time and have it look terrific based on what else I put on my face. When you're doing your own makeup the best suggestion I can give you is pay attention to that product that you put on your face that color product that you go, wow, that looks great. That's a real signal that whatever the tone is in that particular product works for your unique combination. And that's the deal. There are so many unique combinations when it comes to hair, skin, eye color, that deciding this palette is perfect for you without actually applying it to your skin can be a little bit tricky. Pay attention to when you put a color on your face and you go, wow, that just really works. And also when you put it on, it's like, ah, I don't know. If it's an, ah, I don't know, it's an no. <laughs> We try to feel better about things sometimes that aren't working. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to keep everything else kind of cool neutral on my face today because my eyes are cool. I look better in cool colors. Everything that I put on, I want it to be subtle and kind of in the cool tone because I really want to highlight my eyes. For blush, I'm going to be using the Bare Minerals. This is in the color Rose Glow. This is a cool tone pink and it is so beautifully subtle. It really is one of my favorite blushes right now. It's almost kind of magical. I like the fact that it's a cool tone pink and it's very, very soft and subtle, yet it has a really great finish on it. So I'm going to get a little bit on my brush and just start pouncing that on my face. And you can see it's putting color down on my skin, but it's also very, very subtle. It's not a big change to my skin tone, which is what I want for this particular makeup look because I want want the focus on my eyes. Now I'm going to take the BK Beauty 103 brush and I'm just going to blend that in. And when you're doing that, make sure you focus around the edges as well because that's where you want the blending to happen is around the edges. You don't want there to be a line around any color product you put on. You want it to be blended in. So we're just going to blend that in. And you can see that's just a nice, cool, subtle addition to that eye look. For a highlight today, I'm going to be using the Makeup by Mario. I love this. You can see I've hit pan in this. That so rarely happens. This is in the color Pearl. It's kind of a champagne look. And I'm just going to go right at the tops of my cheeks, a little bit on the front, and that adds just a little bit of glow to the complexion. To finish off the complexion, I'm going to use the Hourglass. This is in dim light. This is a beautiful finishing powder. These are very expensive. They last forever. <laughs> so in my mind, it's kind of totally worth it. And this is just going to add a subtle radiance to the skin and bring everything together. Kind of pull it in all together. Now I'm going to go back in with that big fluffy eyeshadow brush. This is Angie's brush. It's the 503 from BK Beauty. It's a wonderful brush. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make sure that all my edges are really, really soft so that everything blends in really smoothly together. Now I'm going to tight line with the L'Oreal Infallible Gel Liner. This is in the color black. And what I'm doing when I'm tight lining is I'm really trying to get in between each individual lash. That gives a strong base to your lashes and really emphasizes the lash line. 
L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Base. This stuff is magic. <laughs> it really is. What a difference. If you start using this, you may never go back to not using a primer again. This is the Revlon Big Bad Lash. Love this stuff. Drugstore price. So this is two coats with the Revlon Big Bad Lash. And you can see right now the emphasis for this particular makeup look is really on my eyes because everything else is just a subtle shade compared to the strength of that shadow on top of my eyes. What I wanna do is I wanna keep my lips in the same tone, a cool tone, but very, very subtle. So you're not confused about where to look on my face, whether to focus on my eyes or on my lips. I'm gonna be using one of my favorite lip liners. This is from Maybelline. It's from their Color Sensational line. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Is it Gone Grage? It's G-R-I-E-G-E. -E. It is a cool toned neutral, which I just almost cannot find anywhere. It's a really rare thing to find a cool toned neutral. This is probably one of the best I've found. You can see it right here. It almost tones towards a purple, which is a deep, cool purple. And for the lipstick, I'm going to be using a Lawless lipstick. This is called Wedding Day. Again, is a cool toned neutral. And that combination is going to keep the cool tones going in my makeup look and keep my lips pretty but subtle. In other words, the color combination is gonna look terrific, but it's not going to be the first thing you notice when you look at my face. Here we have the lipstick. Here we have the finished look. And you can see with the focus being on the eyes, and when you look at my face, that's right where your eye goes is to my eyes because they're the strongest color, the most contrast, and really the one thing on my face that is standing out. Everything else from the blush to the lipstick to the highlighter, it's just a supporting component of the look of the eyes. So this is a color combination that works well for my skin, hair tone, and eye color. A cool color neutral with a dark eye. This is a go-to look for me because I've tested it and tried it and I know this color combination can really work when I want the focus to be on my eyes. So staying cool with the coordinating colors of the blush and the lip really help bring the look all together and make it look very polished, very cohesive, and it just works. I'm going to be back next with a clean face and this time we're going to focus on the lips. I'm back. This makeup look is going to take the focus off the eyes and put it on the lips. This is a great look if you want a strong lip like a red lip or a fuchsia lip, something along those lines. And what we want to think about when we're focusing on the lips for our makeup look is to make sure that everything else on the face is a little more quiet. The last thing we want to do is create a very strong eye and a very strong lip lip because it just gives too much pigment to the face. When we look at a makeup look like that, we're not sure where to focus, the eyes or the lips. And the confusing thing is if you look at the makeup look, you'll say, oh, the eyes look great, the lips look great, but for some reason it's just not working. And that reason is, is that there's too much focus going on. We need to select either the lips or the eyes. For this look, I'm going to focus on the lips as the point of interest and to do that I'm going to be using a beautiful red lip. This is from the Revlon Color Stay line. Let me see if I can find the color. I can't. <laughs> but it'll be listed in the description box down below. But let me go ahead and show you the color of the lip right here. So you can see that's a very, very beautiful, strong red. It's a little more on the cooler tone, which seems to work well for my skin, hair, and eye coloring. So this is gonna be the focus of my lips today and everything else is just going to be kind of a supporting player to really showing off this red lip. 
I've already prepped my face with everything that I used the first time around. I did the Dermatology Number no. 1 Primer, both of the Jones Road pencils, the brighter one for under my eyes and the more skin tone one to just kind of clean up the areas of my face. And then I used the Catrice Under Eye Brightener. And then for eyeshadow primer, I went ahead and used the MAC Paint Pot. This is pretty much how I prep my face every time when I'm going to be doing a full face of makeup. It was exactly the same this time. I'm gonna be starting with the eyes right now, and to do that, I'm gonna be using the Tartlet In Bloom palette from Tarte. This is a beautiful neutral palette, and because I'm going to keep the eyes fairly quiet, this is a perfect selection of colors to do that. Again, I'm going to be using the Angie 503 brush. I've cleaned it off, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip into this neutral tone right here. That's going to go over the entire eyelid, both of them, from top to bottom. Get a little bit on my brush, tap that off, and I'm just going to start lightly applying that to the entire eyelid area. I don't want it too heavy. What I really want is kind of a watercolor wash of that tone over my entire lid. I'm gonna go back in with the second coat of that same shadow, and what I'm gonna do this time, load my brush up, tap it off, and I'm going to swipe that over the movable lid because I wanna make sure that I get an extra coat of that light color in the lid area. Same thing on the other side. And then I'm just gonna blend that all up, up to the brow. The next color I'm gonna use is this very light neutral shade right here. Where I'm going to apply that is right in the transition area and a little bit into the crease. All I'm trying to do is to create the slightest little contrast in my eyes to give them a little bit of depth. I don't want to draw attention to the eyes. I just want to create a nice look of a crease area right Right above that movable lid. I'm going to load my brush up, tap it off, and then I'm going to place it right in that transition area on the outside corner of my eye and just gently start moving that across. I'm going to do the same thing on the other eye. Load my brush up, tap it off, place it right in that outside corner of that transition area and start moving that over. Now that I have that shadow on my eye, I'm gonna go ahead and take a tissue and just clean my brush off because what I wanna do now is I wanna blend that light tan color into my eyes really, really well. So it's a smooth transition from the transition area down to my movable lid and then on up to the brow. So I'm gonna take that clean brush and I'm just gonna start working really lightly on those edges. And you can see I'm holding my brush at the very end so that it gives me a really light hand. And I'm just gonna work on blending that color in so well that it actually just looks like the natural shadow of my eye. Same thing on the other side and I'm focusing on the edges of that color so that it blends in really well. So I have that shadow all blended in and you can see now when you look at me, you might think there's a little bit of shadow there, but it's not really apparent because now it just looks like the natural crease and the natural shadowing from my eye. Next up, I'm gonna move into foundation and this is another one of my holy grails. This is the Bare Minerals, their powder foundation. And if you're saying, oh my gosh, Kimberly, I can't can't use powder my skin's too dry this one is a little bit different it has a really unusual beautiful kind of filter to it it looks gorgeous on the skin so I'm gonna just tap a little bit into the lid I'm gonna take my big fluffy brush this is the BK Beauty 101 brush I'm gonna swirl it around in that lid so that it gets on all the bristles of that brush and then I'm just gonna start dusting that over my face this stuff is amazing and I can I remember when I first tried it, gosh, 15 years ago, 12 years ago, I was just amazed at how gorgeous it is and how light and beautiful it looks on the skin. So you can see already how it's creating this beautiful, subtle glow on my face. I'm gonna go back in with just a little bit more. If you're looking for a really light coverage, something that looks natural and gives you a really pretty look, this is the ticket. Just a little bit of this just dusted over the face is so pretty. Now now I'm gonna go in with concealer. It's the same one, the Revlon Color Stay Skin Awake, and I really do like this a lot. And I'm just gonna dot that underneath my eye, kind of right in that little trough I have there that tends to be a little bit purple. Take my finger and just start patting that in. 
Now I'm going to take my sponge and just press that concealer in. Kosas Cloud Set Powder, a little bit on my brush, and I'm just going to press that lightly underneath my eyes. Back in with that sponge. I'm going to use the same bronzer today, the Jones Road Bronzer. This is their gel bronzer. I love it. And it's in the color medium. So a little bit on the back of my hand. I'm going to start dotting that around. Blending it in. I use a stipple brush for my bronzer. I just really like the way that it works with the product. This one, oh my gosh, I think it's from Real Techniques. I've had it forever. I don't even think they have it in the line anymore, which is unfortunate because it's a great brush. And you can see right there how that's cut my cheekbone to give me a little more look of a shape to my face and down under my chin, just creating a bit of a shadow there to make my chin line look a little bit firmer than it really is. Because I'm using a very strong red lip today, I want to tone the blush to really work with the lips. This is a blush from Milani, it's gorgeous. It's called Red Vino. <laughs> And if I can get it open, it's right here. It is just a lovely blush with a little bit of a gold reflect in there. Here's the thing about this blush. I want this red tone because I want my face to look like it all matches along with my red lips, but this is very, very strong. So when I go in, I wanna be very light-handed because I want the lips to be the focus. If I have too much red on my cheeks, it's not gonna work because it's going to really conflict with each other, not knowing where to eye to land on the cheeks or on the lips. So this is very strong. I want to go very light. I'm going to take my blush brush right here and I'm just going to barely add that tone to the upstairs area of my cheeks. Now it's going to look a little stronger now because my cheeks are going to flush a little bit from me patting it on. It'll calm down once I blend it in and what's that blood kind of <laughs> calms down from filling my cheeks up. You can see what a beautiful tone that is. Now I'm going to take that big fluffy brush and I'm going to really work around the edges of that blush to really blend it in. And there we have just a nice rosy red blush. Very subtle, well blended, and it's going to tone beautifully with the lipstick. I'm going to go back into that same highlighter, the Pearl from Makeup by Mario, swirl a little bit on my brush, and then just hit the tops of my cheeks. Then back in with that big fluffy brush and blend it in. And then to finish off the complexion, I'm going to use the Hourglass. This is their Dim Light Finishing Powder. You guys know I love this. <laughs> it's just so gorgeous. Now I'm going to tight line with the L'Oreal Infallible Gel Liner, use the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Base, and then the Big Bad Lash from Revlon, and I'll be right back. So here's the completed eye look, and you can tell the difference between the strong eye that I did just a few minutes ago and this very subtle eye for this look. It almost looks like that shadow is just the shadow of my natural lid because it's so subtle and it's so well blended in. And you're gonna see when I put on the very strong lipstick how it really helps us to focus on the lips and just take the eyes as a nice companion component to the strong lips. Here we have the lipstick. Here we have the finished look. And you can tell immediately with this look, your eyes go right to my lips because there's nothing else on the face that's competing for the attention other than the lips. <laughs> the eyes are very, very subtle. The cheeks, although they tone in with the lipstick, they're also very subtle. So the whole look really is a background for that red lip. So today we've seen how to have a dark eye and a light lip and how to tone those colors to make it really work 
work and how to have a light eye and a very bold red lip. Once you understand the whole concept and principles behind putting together a face of makeup, choosing the focus and then toning all the other elements to fit that focus, it becomes super easy to put together a great look that flatters your features and really works. I hope you had a good time today talking about colors for makeup, how to choose what works, and picking out the feature that you want to emphasize. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. You guys know it just tickles me when you take a few minutes out of your day to spend it with me. I appreciate that and I appreciate you. Again, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50 where we talk everything beauty, fitness, and lifestyle for the over 50 and over 60 woman. Make it a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.